train stops play. You are very lucky engines, said Stepney. Your branch has got everything. It's long enough to give you a good run. And you have plenty of passengers. Then you have a quarry, a mine, and some factories. So you need plenty of trucks. Trucks are fun, he went on wistfully. I miss them on our line. Percy looked surprised. You can take mine and welcome this morning, he said. So they asked permission and then went off to collect them. Toby and Thomas gaped in wonderment. Stepney took his trucks to the harbour, picked up a load of empties and started back. On the way they were stopped by a signal near a cricket field, where a match had just started. They settled down to watch. Presently some fielders came towards them and waved. Could you move, please, they asked. Uh, your last few trucks are behind the bowler's arm. Sorry, smiled the driver. Will this do? And he eased Stepney forward till he stood under the signal. The cricketers shouted their thanks and play started again. The batsman hit out and soon a skyer towered towards the train. Clunk! Down went the signal. There was another clunk too as the ball fell on the train but neither driver nor farman heard it. They were too busy. Stop! yelled the fieldsman. But Stepney's noisy starting drowned their shouts. Come along! Come along, he puffed to the trucks and left the frantic fieldsman behind. I've oh, won an only ball, he said sadly. Four of them piled into an ancient car. Wake up, Caroline, they said. Caroline coughed crossly, reluctantly came to life, and they rolled out onto the road. Stepney wasn't hurrying. He had just crossed the river when Caroline came up behind. Toot, toot, she wailed. Road and rail ran side by side. The cricketers waved and shouted, but they were too far away for the farmer to recognise them, or hear clearly what they said. If these jokers want a race, remarked the driver, they can have one. He advanced his regulator, and Stepney drew ahead. Poor Caroline wasn't happy. She rattled along at twice her usual speed. Master shouldn't treat me like this, she grumbled. This place is too hot for my system. It'll fuse all my circuits. Hurrah! she exclaimed. That silly train has run into a hole, so we can't catch it. Now Master will have to be sensible and go home. But Master didn't go home. Caroline nearly boiled with fury when he made her climb a steep hill and run down to the station on the other side. Caroline arrived just as Stepney had shunted the trucks. His crew were going off duty. The cricketers explained what had happened. The driver and farmer were surprised. Did you say the third truck from the van, they asked. They all went and looked. The ball was there, nestling under some straw. Oh, we're very sorry, the driver said. Never mind, you couldn't help it. Now we must get back quickly. That's just it, said the driver. You'll never be quick in Caroline. She looks worn out. Wait a minute, he went on. I've got a plan. The driver spoke to the station master and signalman. Then they rolled Caroline onto a flat truck and coupled a brake van behind. The cricketers got in, and Stepney pulled the train. They reached the field in no time. Stepney watched from a siding while driver, farmer and guard sat in the pavilion. There were no more lost balls, and the game was played to an exciting finish. Even Caroline was pleased. She doesn't think trains silly now. They have their uses, she says. They can save the wear on a poor car's wheels. Uh, uh.